Amongst the great families of Scotland, one of the oldest and richest comes from right here in North Ayrshire, the Montgomerys of Eglinton. And one of their most famous sons, Archibald Montgomery, has a very special place in their history. The Montgomery family are a hugely significant family across Ayrshire, but particularly here in North Ayrshire. But the main thing really about them was that they were characters. The richness of North Ayrshire and the legacy that the, the Montgomery's left is still really evident today. When Queen Victoria was crowned in 1838, many people in Britain were both annoyed and frustrated that it had all been done on the cheap. In fact, it became widely known as the Penny Coronation. But this inspired Archibald Montgomery to hold his own shindig, the party to end all parties, the Eglinton Tournament. Notice went out far and wide that a grand tournament would be held in August 1839. And this is where it was all to take place the once magnificent Eglinton Castle. Archibald Montgomery was the 13th Earl. He became, by all accounts, a bit of a rebel in his youth. And he loved life, and he enjoyed life, and he was a bit of a party animal. The quality of claret I imbibed during that winter was fabulous. The bets and matches of all sorts I made were innumerable. The scenes at night were far from credible, and the headaches in the morning were dreadful to think of. The Eglinton Tournament was to be a medieval affair, with jousting, banqueting, and knights in shining armour. Eglinton, like many Victorians, had an obsession with medieval times and his ambition was to recreate events from hundreds of years gone by. Word quickly spread around the world about this amazing tournament. If you were very rich, you could come along and compete as a knight, but anyone else was welcome to come along and watch the fantastic spectacle for free. Originally, the Earl hoped that about 4,000 people would come to attend his great tournament. So he got quite the shock when over 100,000 people turned up at his castle door. He had 150 people set up, ready to come, to compete. Now, once reality kicked in and they realised the expense of tailor-made suits of armour, horses, etc. 13 people did decide that they would come, that they would compete, and they were going to have a good shindig. Although there weren't as many knights as Eglinton had hoped for, the public were gripped by tournament fever and arrived in their droves from all over Europe, many in medieval costume and all looking forward to a spectacular show. Unfortunately for them though, Eglinton's tournament could never have coped with the vast numbers that turned up on the day. It's hard to believe, on a beautiful day like today, that anything could go wrong with the Earl's plan. But boy, did it go wrong. With the cream of Britain's aristocracy standing in their finest armour and tens of thousands of spectators watching on, there was a flash of lightning, a roll of thunder, and the heavens opened. Although the day had dawned clear and fine, as the knights and their entourages struggled to organise the parade, the sky began to darken. Just at the moment when the parade was finally arranged, just as Lady Seymour, the Queen of Beauty, was heralded by trumpets, there was a flash of lightning, a great crash of thunder, and the black clouds of Ayrshire let loose with a sudden and violent rainstorm. The whole event was a washout. 
So 1839, of course, way back then, there's very little in the way of meteorological reports, but generally, on average, August is slightly wetter, and August is also uh, one of the most thundery months of the summer, so try and avoid August if you're going to hold a big event. <laughs> On a typical summer's day when we get thunderstorms, it generally does start off dry, sunny, warm, and then you get those clouds bubbling up around lunchtime into the afternoon. That's when those storms tend to be most lively, and of course that was the case in this event. Over the years we have seen tea in the park, uh, transmit, we've seen these become a complete washout sometimes, these big music festivals and big outdoor events, but then sometimes they get lucky and it falls during a, a really hot, dry and sunny spell. So that's just the way it is in Scotland for uh, outdoor events. The party of the century had become a sodden fiasco. The main event was the jousting. They tried, but it was just too muddy. The thunderclouds had gathered and it had started to rain. And it rained and it poured and it carried on raining. And they jousted as best they could, but it was eventually cut short and the uh, competitors called it a day. Day two, Thursday, and things did not get any better. Thursday morning dawned and it wasn't any drier. So it was deemed unfit to be able to joust on the Thursday, so there was nothing happened on the Thursday. Day three, Friday, finally a break in the weather, and they decided to have a bash. The highlight of this shambles of a tournament was the melee. Essentially, it was a civilised gentleman's punch-up, an aristocratic square goal. No two ways about it, the tournament was a massive disaster. There was no food and no beds for the guests and none of the events had gone off as planned. It was undoubtedly the biggest, the most expensive disaster in Scottish party history. But you know what? We're still talking about it. people who did compete in the tournament. A few years after the tournament decided that they were not going to be downtrodden, that despite it having been three days of rain, they were still going to have an amazing trophy. The Knights clubbed together and presented the Earl with a spectacular gift, as seen here in a rare photograph. And this is the magnificent, the wonderful Eglinton Trophy. The Montgomerys as a family obviously are still the heirs of Eglinton and we are still blessed that they come down and they visit. However, after the tournament, bad circumstances fell onto the family and the family did and eventually in 1925 had to move out of the castle and sell up. Mother Nature took its toll, weather beaten, the castle genuinely fell into to disrepair and went to rack and ruin. So the remains that you see today is what was left of it. They moved from here up to Skelmerley Castle. The tournament hadn't gone the way that the Earl wanted. It nearly bankrupted the family and eventually led to the ruin of this once great castle. It wasn't the party he planned, but what a story. 